<laughs> then we say we can't we can't kill it, right? Or we can't just flush it down the toilet. Then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna film this whole vlog. We're gonna we're gonna bring this eel to the Long to the Longkang. <laughs> and then once we got there, then we like we threw the eel down. Then it it created the loudest splat <laughs> that we heard in the history of splats. Oh it's just God. like plop. <laughs> then we're like, I think it's dead. Welcome to Talk Some More, the video podcast dedicated to featuring young creators, entrepreneurs, and ordinary people with extraordinary stories. This show is distributed on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes, so feel free to follow us for the latest episodes. My guest today is Thomas Kopankiewicz, a pro esports gamer, YouTuber, and content producer at Wa Banana. In this episode, we talk about his recent silver medal win at the SEA Games 2019, where he represented Singapore in the esports. We discuss the challenges and trends of being a YouTuber in Singapore, as well as the creative process behind some of Wa Banana's comedy videos. We chat about our goals for our own YouTube channels and what it means to be a content creator amongst the saturation of social media. You can find Thomas on Instagram at HeyThomasK or subscribe to his YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting pro gamer and YouTuber Thomas Kopankiewicz. Let's talk some more. Welcome to another episode of Talk Some More. Oh. Today we have with us uh, Thomas K, a content creator slash competitive gamer. Nice. I think that, that might be the easiest way yes. to say it. Yeah. So um, yeah, so you might recognize him from um, some episodes of Wa Banana mm. um, and of course some snippets of uh, other content creators that might have featured him and of course uh, Instagram. Um, quite popular up there. Um, but yeah. yeah, also famously for the recent silver medal yeah. in the SEA Games. Awesome. That's that's one of the nicer brandings, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you so much for representing Singapore. Yeah. So, Let's try to get go in 2021. Uh. Oh, is it 2021? Yeah, next year. All right. So let's hope that nothing gets postponed. Yeah. <laughs> let's hope. All right. So, um, so... I just wanted to to start off the conversation just roughly, um, you know. So like all teenage boys, you know, we we love our video games. Yeah. Uh, um, I used to be very big in Counter Strike. I love Counter Strike. Uh, first player shooter, it's called, I think. Yeah, yeah FPS. Um, and I I could never play like World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. This kind of uh, strategic games. But um, how how did you channel that? You know, like from a hobby, a schoolboy hobby, into something you think you know, it might be something serious that you want to pursue. Or was it like when you got good and you're like, eh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's kind of that. I think I also grew up like, uh, I, I played real-time strategy games with my brother and my dad whenever I went back to Germany. So I live here with my mom, but my dad, my biological father and my brother lives in Germany. So when I used to go back as a kid, uh, I'll play with them real-time strategy games. So oh. I think there, the, the liking towards RTS games kind of grew. Uh, but I've, I also played tons of other stuff like CS, Dota, stuff like that. Um, and then StarCraft came to me when a friend introduced it and then I started playing it a little bit and then I realized that there was a competitive scene and I watched the games and I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. I got <laughs> really drawn into the community. Then I went to play more and then I just really wanted to figure out the game and get better at it. Yeah. And then when I've invested so much time into it, right, then I'm like, okay, is there any way to turn this hobby into something that can like, earn me money, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So, so like your so family's then, been very supportive so far of this route? Or no, no, no. Uh, there's no. been questions? Yeah, they were <laughs> super against. Oh, super really? against, yeah. So at the, um, yeah, actually it started more from like, there was like a land competition. It was typical kind of like, you don't even earn much, maybe like Small first price, price like 100 bucks or oh, okay, okay. like maybe some like keyboard or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And then you just go for those kind of tournaments and then I did very well at the first one uh, that I joined. And then because of that, like I got picked up by a team and then that kind of like journey started. Okay. okay. Yeah. So but like in a team, you get more like sponsorships and a bit more. Yeah. So as someone who like never has been in this like industry and you watch all these pro players and they get free stuff and you as a team, you're getting free stuff. You're like, oh my God, that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a dream already. So you get like sponsor stuff, you get like a jersey or photo shoot and you look really cool and stuff like that. So that's how they get you. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. So so from that, I, I mean, you were obviously balancing like school and stuff like that mm. with this. Um, but like, I, I can understand, you know, the parents' point of view, like gaming yeah. was a bit, I think back then as well. It back was then was worse. Very fresh. Because like, I don't think competitive gaming was a thing yet. Yeah. Like yeah. TI, 
when I started, I think TI wasn't even there. What is TI? The, uh, the international. So that's the million dollar tournament. Oh, okay, okay. That now we're at like the international, I don't know, eight or 11 or something. Like oh, okay, okay. A couple years. years? In, yeah, yeah, okay, every year okay. there's one. So like during my time, when I first started gaming, there was, there was none of this. So there's no mainstream coverage on it almost mm. at all. So a lot of doubts okay. from the parents for sure. But I mean, parents just want the best for the kid. Yes. And if they see the kid putting that much time into something that might not give any return, <laughs> I think it's only logical for them to try to dissuade the child from it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I, I don't blame them. Like until mm. today, maybe it's still a, a bit like, uh, don't know if that's a, I mean, it's obviously very competitive. Like mm. I would say, I think like that million dollar tournament you're talking about, it's just mm. one team that wins. Yeah, and then correct. okay, maybe second and third prize. But then what happens okay, to la, the rest that one, of the teams? Yeah, for you know? okay for for the international, that one is like all the teams get money. Oh, okay. like even if you're like, uh, I think like sixteenth, you still get like hundred thousand something like that. Do you need to pay to enter this tournament? No. no. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So but the prize pool, but the prize pool is huge. So oh, these shit. guys are like the top five percent in the world, mm. or like top two percent in the world. Damn. So if you're not in that top two percent you're not in the limelight and you're the rest of the gamers so you don't earn money at all. So you've been to this tournament? Uh, not this tournament. This tournament is for Dota. So I've been to like Dream Hacks, which are like other big tournaments for like StarCraft and okay, other okay. games and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. I, yeah. yeah. So for, okay, for like a layman like me, mm. um, so these tournaments are based on the types of games that you are focused on. Like what you said, one mm. is for StarCraft, one is for World of... Yeah. Uh, so it depends. Like some... Some gaming events have all the different kind of games. Mm. Like they have like StarCraft, they have Counter-Strike, they have Dota. And then some other are exclusive tournaments to that game. Okay. So like the International is a Dota exclusive tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And their prize pool is driven by the makers of the game or like in-game purchases and mm. stuff like that. So that's why their prize pool is that big. Yeah. For StarCraft, it's generally smaller because the, uh, the player base is smaller. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, yeah, th I mean, I mean, growing growing up like, you know, pursuing your passion. I th I think every everyone kind of enjoys gaming, but mm. you know, um, w has it ever turned into something that becomes more work than play, or do you still like till today enjoy it? Yeah, uh, as in to to be competitive at a game or to even go professional, uh, it is work. Mm. Any if if you feel like you're not putting in work right, it means you're not doing it right. Already. Okay. I would say that's it's that simple because practicing a game and playing a game is very different. Do you think it's easier now for people to get into competitive gaming? I think so, but I think for you to for you to get into competitive gaming is easy. Like you can be good at a game and then you get you you can go competitive, mm. but if, for you to be competing at the pro level and winning money and all that is different. So being good at a game doesn't help you. Mm. Um, all that much because you you need to have like a good psychology going into tournament games like managing your nervous uh, like your how nervous you are yep. uh, managing your adrenaline um, uh, in-game strategies like along that three games along that five game series and uh, yeah all these kind of factors okay, and like sports science kind of thing correct right, exactly like okay. sports science and is it a lot more saturated like with the competitors what do you mean? Like, is there a lot more people to compete with now? Mm. Or do you think it's still roughly the same amount? I think it's roughly the same amount. Okay. Like the people who are good, it's that bunch. Yeah, like, I, feel, I feel very old now because I stopped playing games. Oh, <laughs> Once no, in a while, no. I'll go into Steam and like play Counter-Strike for yeah. a while <laughs> just to get the thrill. And then like, everyone's so good out there. I, I feel like it's just you moving on from games. Mm. Yeah. Like I, I know older people who play games as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I, I don't feel like it's an age thing. It's just a choice thing. Like an interest. Yeah. Like Okay. I don't do TikTok. So, I mean, <laughs> is it an age thing? I think it's a choice thing. What age would you put TikTok at? I don't know. The like Gen Zs. Like old teens. Like old teens. Nah, maybe just teens. Like yeah. the before 20s. Yeah, before 20s. Okay, okay. Yeah. But then here we go, like YouTubers who are like 30s and they're doing TikTok. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, yeah, do what you want. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I can still not understand TikTok. I understand roughly what people I don't, do on it, but I don't understand like, you know, does the content stay there? Is it having a like kind of, you know, you oh, can hit like in, and share. As in those kind of stuff? Yeah, uh, I have no there's idea. no real share, but there, there's like, there's comments so on every it, other platform. So 
I, I presume it's like Instagram. You get a feed of who you're following. Yeah. Some. I mean, YouTube does that as well. Subscribers. But there's also a suggested. Okay. So the main page for TikTok. It's like trending stuff. Is this? Yeah. It's the trending page, and it's what they call. I just recently learned this. It's called FYP. FYP. Yeah. What's it's that? called for you page. Huh? That's the suggest. <laughs> that's basically the suggested feed, but that's the main feed uh, for okay, you to okay. go to your following you have to click something oh okay, so you know okay. how instagram if you open up yeah, the main page first. is your following first yeah. yeah so so on tiktok is the other the way the default around. is the explore yeah correct oh, okay. so for you to land there that's the goal wow yeah and do, do you know if it goes by regional or is it just worldwide i think it's worldwide oh shit yeah okay. i think the, the the share is worldwide and it depends on like what kind of content it is how long people are watching and they, they have their own algorithm like basically okay but yeah, it's to, pretty, to push whoever's you know popular and trending yeah. and stuff like that up. But the growth is, I mean, on these kind of platforms, the growth is damn quick. Like, is it? if you if you catch on a certain kind of humor, uh, and people like it, it you grow super quick. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, it, it's very it's how I would call like it's cheap humor. Cheap humor. Short yeah. Term. You don't need to think too much about it, and then you just use whatever filter is available. But that's the beauty of it too, because anyone can do it. Anyone mm. can pick a filter, have fun with it, and then boom, they can they can be like professional at it or like uh, viral basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. That's something new I learned. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I mean, aside, aside from um, gaming, um, you also... I mean, by the way, we are in Wabanana. Oh yeah, office. I, I didn't studio? tell my I didn't tell my boss that we were doing oh, this. I'm sorry, I just. I mean, it's probably recognizable, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell him. Uh, just, but, but in case my boss sees this, I got him to use the hand sanitizer. We're limiting the space into just this couch yeah, area. This so is all good. exactly a meter apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Social distancing. <laughs> so, um, I mean, um, Thomas, you. Um, I think I, I found you through like YouTube as well. Mm. Um, your videos and stuff like that. Mostly your vlogs at the start before. Uh, I think before what banana. Mm. Um, so, you know, um, being you know at doing in Singapore, I would say um, the YouTube scene uh, is still it's growing now. I think yeah. it's exponentially growing um, because of companies like Wild Banana, uh, NOC, um, yeah. uh, TSL, and stuff like that. So, but there are even new smaller creators coming around and doing mm. stuff. So yeah. So how did you get started in that? Was like you started off like vlogging your own stuff? Was it? Um, I started in uh, the smart local first oh so i entered through internship from poly mm. to the smart local i didn't know who they were by the way <laughs> it's just that my uh i used to play games yeah. and one of the players is the founder of uh the smart local brian oh. so i used to play competitively with him that. I'll tell you yeah. Yeah. so yeah. i used to play competitively with him and then okay. i just shot him a met like i tried to apply for different places and they all didn't have internship programs so i wrote into him i'm like yo y'all have a spot <laughs> and he's like okay come down for interview tomorrow and i'm like, okay so nice. i went and i made it through and then i went to uh i was marketing and sales first mm. and then after that because i kept joining in the ideation talks he eventually pushed me up to join the video team and then in the video team, then he got me to start vlogs. Because during that time, vlogs were quite the trend. Vlogs. So, so he got me to start the TSL vlogs. Was it a personal one? Like, as in like, no, you, no, you like, are the like one? the Smart Local. Like, I handle all the vlogs for Smart Local. Yeah, yeah. But when you say vlog, is it like real vlogging style? Like, you are the star and you are the one uh, shooting? Not so much. Okay. I film the people. You're filming the people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was quite confusing to me at that point in time because I don't know how to like figure out and structure it so that I am not the star, even though I'm the one holding the camera and feeding the lines. Yeah. Because then it becomes like a behind the scenes kind of thing. Yeah. So, okay. And, and because it was all new to me, I had a lot of things to like, that I wanted to try out too. And whatever I tried out on the smart logo, my boss wasn't a, the biggest fan of it. Mm -hmm. He had a certain like kind of style that he wanted to f it to fit in, which I totally get. It's more client friendly. Okay. So I brought all my curiosity and stuff to my own channel. That's when I started my own stuff. Okay, okay. So I, I started doing like almost daily vlogs. So like daily either vlogs duo daily. Just what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Like one vlog every two days or something. Oh. Like whatever I'm doing, I keep finding like interesting things to do in Singapore. It's like, cause a lot of people say like Singapore it just, it's boring, just uh, like boring. Yeah, to which I like totally disagree. Mm. Like there's so much things to do in Singapore. You just have to, find it yeah i mean what when you start doing these videos uh, it forces yeah. you to think harder and yeah. make something that seems uninteresting yeah. more interesting because the the easiest thing for you is on a weekend to just sit home and stay home mm. but the if you want to make it interesting 
just go online, search what's happening this weekend, whether it's a museum, or um, festival. A festival or whatever it is, or like new foods to try. Like literally Singapore has all that constantly going on and on and on. Mm. Like it's crazy cool as a city yep. that's this small and this accessible. So yeah, I'm very against like people who say like, oh, there's nothing to do here or whatever. Like, have you been to <laughs> European cities where there is literally nothing but just nature? Because they're so sparse and, and you're so like, far yeah, away. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I, I started appreciating nature too, but I mean, if you compare Singapore to like other places, like it's, yeah. come on lah. Okay lah, don't compare to places like Tokyo or stuff like that lah. Those places are like, okay, they win. Okay, yeah. hands down. <laughs> but you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, Singapore being so dense and compact, I think we are pretty hip and yeah. on the ball. We're yeah. pretty cool. I mean, um, like there's a very good balance of like culture, modern stuff, things to do, nature, like, I, I know. I mean, uh, I think that's what uh, a lot of the influencers on like YouTube, they, they strive at like finding these stuff things to do. Mm. And I mean, for viewers, like, you know, it's like, oh shit, this was happening on yeah. this weekend. Why didn't I go there? Yeah. It's uh, like what they say, it's all about like trying to f like finding, just just opening up your eyes and like finding what's going yeah. on in Singapore. And so I, I literally, I went to, I took a day off yesterday for my own mental health. Wow. And then I went to Pulau Ubin alone Pulau Ubin yeah and I shot I shot like Instagram stories I'm gonna make the vlog this nice. weekend or something and I shot Instagram stories people are asking like oh my god where's this oh, so cool I'm like it's Pulau Ubin guys like oh no we just we just kind of forgot about that little island yeah. but it cost you like three bucks to go there yeah I, I can't remember the last time I was in Pulau Ubin I think yeah. I was riding bikes at least 10 years ago wow right same yeah. like that's why I was like I needed to get away I'm like the typical kind of millennial who needs to travel after working for a few months but Everything got cancelled because Corona time. Oh my god! So I was like, where can I travel to if I can't travel? Oh, oh Pula Ubin. Take a boat. <laughs> let's go. And like, yeah. Was it, I don't think there were many people going there. Yeah, not many. But yeah. there were still people going there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So like, so I go around. And Wait, but yesterday was a uh, Friday. Friday. Whoa, really? Okay. Got people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I met like two random people around. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I joined them and then I made friends and whatnot. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this whole Corona situation is like, or everyone in the travel industry is like stuck. Yeah, like it sucks. Don't don't talk about like travellers, like people who just go for holidays, but people mm -hmm. who like depend on it. Uh, I got a few friends. Who I are like, feel yeah, yeah. I honestly feel the most for for okay, not so much for the freelancers, but we'll get there. <laughs> uh, I feel the most for like literally travel agencies or like airlines oh, and yeah. the frontline workers, like people who are literally losing their job because of it's directly affecting yeah. them it's so insane and they have, like no, the and they have is, no way around it that's you know true. what I mean they have that's, no way around that's your job it. that's your career yeah. you build your whole life around it yeah. uh, for yeah. free like I have very little empathy for freelancers right now why even though I used to be one like because I feel like you chose you chose this life mm -hmm. like you chose to be a freelancer okay you know that it comes with this kind of risk that if shit goes down you're, you're cucked, yeah. you know? Like that if there's a pandemic, you're not gonna get jobs. That's mm. part of the risk of being freelancers. And when there's, when things are going well, it's easy. Yeah. Like you're gonna get tons of jobs. You're gonna out earn people who do a full-time job. But it's like days like this, which is exactly why mm. people like me have taken on a full-time job. The because I, Yeah, it's for the stability. So like, I feel people who are complaining, like they just, I just feel like you're, they're super, I'm, I'm, feel, I'm a bit negative right now, but like, <laughs> I just feel like it's very privileged for them to go out and start calling out like clients and brands mm. and like saying like, oh my God, I got no money. Like, come on, man. You chose this job. Like, <laughs> you chose to take the risk. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I choose my YouTube life. Like, I don't go around complaining why investment banker make so much money. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, come on, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, understandable. I'm, I'm, I'm on that. I'm on that boat. <laughs> so I don't. That's know. a new perspective. I've never heard that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. This is this is what I think. Yeah, I mean, like for for yourself, um, I mean, uh, has has this whole situation affected you? For sure. I mean, like, like I want to, like I have a lot of content that I want to do, which mm. requires traveling, of course. So that's been stopped. Um, yeah, a lot of client stuff. Okay. They just want to hold off certain things. Yeah. Uh, Wah Banana as well like naturally a lot of clients are like holding budget and stuff like that so it's tough all across I think every single economy is being hit but mm. uh, I still have a job yeah that's great so yeah. I'm I'm super grateful for that the fact that I am working full time right now gives me stability as well and like like honestly I just feel a lot for the people who are like I don't know in Singapore whether it's that bad 
But in America, people are literally losing jobs. Like imagine you wanted to start a cafe this year mm. and you just open it for two months oh, and then shit. boom, this happens. That's it's true. like you lose so much money. Yeah, you could have been saving up for that shop or something yeah. like that. And that's it. And you just happen to pick this year that's, oh, I didn't have thought. Like, like people like this, you know, yeah. like how tough is it for them? I heard the US emplo- unemployment rate is expected to hit 30%. Yeah, which which that's is just- insane. Yeah. Like people like that, I just want, like, you start to wonder like how you can help them instead of worrying too much about the hell you're going through. Yeah, I mean- Like people panicking about like vegetables, but there are people out there who like can't even- probably can't even afford the I vegetables know. right now. I was eating a whole fish for dinner one day and yeah. I was like, I felt so bad. Like it was just two days ago. I don't ago. feel bad. <laughs> like, oh. It's like, um, yeah. yeah, I think we are very privileged to be in a country that, sure. that, that takes care of us. Um, you know, supermarkets still stocked yeah. up and everything like that. But there are some countries that are just too big to manage these mm. kind of things. And exactly. Yeah. Um, it's like and people like complaining about our government not doing like come on we are like the most on the ball <laughs> government as in for, for this scenario yeah, like yeah. I'm not super pro authority or anything like that but like in this situation I'm like super proud yeah. that I'm in Singapore the rather than a anywhere great job. yeah the, even I mean the pay cut itself, you know, mm. I, I, you just okay. Maybe it's very easy to say government should pay, take pay cut; they earn too much. But yeah. imagine yourself: would you take a pay cut for your country? Yeah. I can't. I can't honestly just say yes. You know. Yeah, it, it, I, I don't have much money. Yeah, it would, so. take, it would take me a while to think about this kind yeah. of thing. So, I, I don't take yeah. that that pay cut lightly. Uh, mm. But for anyone who's not watching, our government and ministers took a three month oh, yeah. pay cut to help with the Singapore economy yeah. uh, and to show solidarity because the I economy mean, is doing like- if, if you're talking about any other country, maybe it doesn't mean too much, but our ministers get paid a lot. As far as I know, like, three months like a lot of wow. money. So they should have a lot of money themselves too. Like, so. <laughs> I don't feel bad that they're taking a pay cut at all. I'm glad they did it, I but I don't it. feel I bad at all. I pre- yeah, I appreciate it, but I'm like, yeah, you guys, Doing that, ah, should be la, should be la, good la, good la. Oh goodness! Yeah, <laughs> typical Singaporean. Yeah, <laughs> you should la, you should la. I'm true, I'm oh true to this gosh. country, man. Have you been out like to the malls, anything like that? No, like I don't really go too much to the mall. It's like, still actually, actually quite normal. Like, normal? Yeah. Yo, yesterday I got a I got a message, literally telling me that uh like next, they got queues now. Next. Like you, you need to queue to get into the mall, not I, even into I the saw shop. That on the news. Yeah. Then I didn't even know because I stay beside Tiomaru Plaza. Uh-huh. So Tiomaru Plaza has the same implementation. Okay. So I'm like, holy crap! If I need to get groceries, actually, it's pretty tough. So yeah, oh. I haven't like I haven't felt the the immediate impact yet because I'm not queuing anywhere. Mm. Like the moment I see a queue, I just like buzz off and I yeah. come back in two weeks when it's restocked and the panic goes away. But yeah, I think this is going to be a constant thing right now. Like people legit need to stock up and things like this. So it's pretty- yeah. I feel people aren't taking this social distance thing very seriously. Mm, I still not. see crowds of people. Like, honestly, I'm not. Really? As in, I feel like I should be, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm not. It's yeah. just not in the habit of being, you know, I mean, yeah. in such, I mean, we are usually in such close proximity in MRTs, I'm, buses and stuff like that. So yeah. it's hard. Like, and I, I, like for the, me, it's like- is full. <laughs> yeah. My, okay, I have two, two things. One is the most, the, the logic of my mind is like, if you get it, you get it. Mm-hmm. Like you can be as safe as you want. If you're destined to get it, yeah. you're going to get it. <laughs> like, destined to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, it's written in your future already. Uh, I'm this okay. kind of guy, like, yeah, okay. uh, I'm the kind of dude whose mentality is like, if I'm going to die, like on this day, doesn't matter how safe I play it, I'm going to die. Okay. Or like, if I'm not supposed to die on this day, I can be as dangerous as I want and I'm going to live. <laughs> Like that's my kind of mentality. Okay, yeah. So it's like, you can hand sanitize this and wash that and like wear masks and all that. And imagine the moment like you take off your mask to eat food, someone walks over and just coughs in your face. That's like, true. You don't have a control over this kind of things, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, I, so I like get it. be as safe as you want, but know that, you know, like this kind of thing is fleeting. Yeah, so it's, to it's me, not a hundred percent thing. Yeah. I mean, you can, I mean, obviously our own hygiene, hygiene. and stuff like yeah. that. But, but that, that should already have been in your that's like true. everyday life. That's you know? true. You kind of yeah. realize like all the dirtiness that happens yeah. around, like all the things that you're touching. Mm. Like there are some YouTubers who even did like this powder test. So it's an invisible powder. Oh, so okay. he, um, he, he had a preschool um, teacher just dust her hand with it and yeah. shake only three students' hands. The whole class had it all over their faces and everywhere like that. Yeah. They had to turn on the neon light thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so scary. Like, 
This has been going on all around and only when it becomes a pandemic then we start to take notice. I should wash my hands this much. I should, you know, not touch everything on the bus. I'm I'm definitely guilty (laughs) of that too. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, was telling like Sean just now in the lift, like I'm I'm a guy who has the bad habit of like biting nails as well. So my hands go near my face. So I'm like, I'm ready. Your favorite pasta. I'm ready, (laughs) but like, uh, yeah, I hope I don't get it. Plus, I love basketball. Like, that's my vice. Mm. Like, people drink and people smoke. I, I play basketball. That's how I de-stress. Okay. So, like, I can't imagine not playing. Like, right yeah. now, I know the courts be- beside my house, like, that it's empty. But I would still go down and, like, play basketball. Mm-mm. Like, I get the stay-home thing. But I think that's a very generic approach. It's like, the, the main priority is social distancing. Yeah. But I don't think it's compulsory for you to stay home. Mm. Like if I'm confined to a space that's technically like involuntary prison yep. for no reason. Yeah. Oh, I think uh, isn't there is a reason, obviously. But people can't stand that. Yeah, like yeah. it's, I think it's like scientifically proven if you put yourself in a confinement, it's bad for your mental state anyways. Definitely. So like, I do feel like people should get out, but just like not avoid people. Like if you go into nature and stuff like that, you know, naturally you're not going to be around too many yep. people. Yep. And then alongside all that, just keep hygienic and all that. That's my kind of mentality towards this. But, but I mean, this is Singapore. So I think the government is just going for a very blunt stance yeah. to just say, totally just, get just that. stay home, you know? Yeah. Because totally not everybody understands this social distancing thing yeah. or like how to, they're they probably it's, not strict with that or anything. Yeah. So the government is just like, you know, I'll, I'll just cut it short. Everyone just stay home. Yeah. I, it's I, it's I, how we always done things yeah. in Singapore. Just if you notice, like NS or whatever, the, they're just the like scooter, just cut. Yeah, he's <laughs> gonna cut the be- like. There are people who can probably abide by the laws, but screw that, screw them. Yeah, yeah, cut. yeah. yeah. They'll just cut first, and they, then they'll they slowly just, let it go a bit, yeah. a bit, a bit. Yeah, that's how it's we always very, do things. It's very motherly. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, totally okay there. Yeah, I think they say all these laws. Singapore also does this thing where they they like in they talk about laws where it just sounds super harsh, like oh we're gonna find you 10k that kind mm. of thing. But if you really get caught, I'm pretty sure it's a it's just a warning first. Yeah. Like, I mean, nobody will get yeah. like, hand out, hand out like 7K fines everywhere. Or yeah. Something, like, like <laughs> it's not going to happen. So like our government, like they sound crazy sometimes and people can rage at them, but I think they're pretty logical. Actually going back to that TSL thing, I forgot. I had a very funny story about Brian. Uh-huh. I don't know him personally. Yeah. And I went for an interview for, uh, I have, I can't remember what position. I think it was a video producer mm. position. Yeah. I have, I have no, qualifications or anything so that's probably why they didn't get the job but uh, they saw my YouTube channel and then they were like okay okay that, that's some potential so they, yeah. they they were gracious enough to grant me uh, an interview so in the room there were three people um I can't remember who they, they were but mm. apparently Brian was one of them inside yeah. there but I didn't know it was him until I left the place and I think I think it was you who told me it was him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, I, I think you described that person. And I was like, oh yeah, that's Brian. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's very unique. It's so, it's so, I don't know. It's like, I really should research this kind of things before going. It's quite through. funny. Like certain companies, like you can't, they don't give off the immediate like boss vibe. Mm. Like I think even the Wild Banana uh, founder, like Lingy, like when I tell my friends that she's the boss, like a lot of them are like, huh, she's the boss? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> she's the boss. God, the, yeah, they, like they, you would only feel that vibe. Aura. Exactly, you only really feel that vibe once you like start working with them and you oh, see okay, like okay. how how, how capable people, yeah. and how they manage people, yeah. yeah. But sometimes they don't give off that vibe. But I mean, it's all the, all the fluff from ah, social media and whatnot. Yeah, so anyway, like... Uh, Okay, so like I've only been doing this YouTube thing for the past two years, on and off. I mean, on weekends and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But you've been doing it for quite a while. How long exactly do you know? Mm, okay, I think I would say I started since the TSL like vlogging days. I think that's where I can really mark my first like, that's where I got involved mm. into YouTube. So that's like, ah, oh, God knows. Five, nine. nine? I want to say, I would say I was 19 or 20. So that's like five years, maybe. Okay. Five years. Okay. Yeah. So about you, you were in about the same time as Sean, the other Sean. Oh, he's definitely in front of me. Oh, he started okay, first. He started for first. sure. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. For sure, he had like a good how, year how do you think or two. The Singapore YouTube scene is progressing. Like, what do you see? It's trending now. What mm. do you see is the future of Singapore's YouTube scene? Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> I think I think what works in Singapore is still towards the younger demographic okay. like the skits the comedy uh, slightly easier the more easier to digest content for sure do well here 
whatever is with the with the drama does well here. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But I think there is potential for more different kind of like content. So whether it's like for example, uh, KG, you, you, me, and Hara, this guy, like one of my closest friends, uh, he does like arcade videos and it's still fun stuff, but mm-hmm. it's different. Or like he tries to do challenges and like Sean does like amazing like travel videos. You do like amazing like tech review stuff and um, Grandfather Story who does amazing like story type format oh, stuff. Oh yeah, I love that stuff. So there's a lot of great potential uh, YouTube channels which are growing, mm. uh, different kind of formats, which those are the ones that I personally look out for and I'm like, okay, they're great, they're great, they're great. Like a bit different from the mainstream yeah. and sort And of- I'm hoping also to join in that, that category soon with new stuff that I make. But uh, I honestly, I have a lot of ideas that I want to make, I want to do, but haven't gotten to doing yet. So this year was supposed to be that year, coronavirus. <laughs> so we'll see whether end of the year I can start or, ne- or early next year and stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's tough. It's uh, honestly, I think I, I would end up doubting myself a lot when doing YouTube just because of like the number game. Okay. And you see like people producing certain things and you're like, this gets numbers. Like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I just, I just never want to conform to that kind of content. You I know? know. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, it's easy to, I won't say it's easy to conform to that, but that's what everyone's doing. And of course you want to do something that you are passionate about and something you believe in. Yeah. So, which might not get the numbers yet, but uh, yeah, I, it's very true. Like YouTube, yeah. the number game is so... It's, I mean, it's, it's quite it's, it's quite contradict maybe not contradictory, but like maybe a little bit hypocritical too. Cause like I work for Wild Banana, mm-hmm. so maybe people also deem us as part of the like our very simple comedy humor kind of channel. So I, I'm just curious about how um, a comedy um, a YouTube video mm-hmm. is actually structured or it's actually made. I mean, oh, okay. um, if you're a singular person, maybe it's a bit easier, you know, you have this idea in your head, but yep. if you're in a team, like, you know, it involves a few coordination, yep. um, actors, props, locations and stuff like that. And of course, the the, the whole um, machine in your head that's just thinking mm-hmm. of this concept. So maybe just roughly get us through how how a typical Wah Banana video is structured. structured yeah. yeah. Honestly, I learned a lot when I joined this place. And I think I, I gain a lot more appreciation for this kind of content after I join this place. Just the sheer amount of work they put in, the thoughts they put in, and also like the demographic it reaches. Um, like there is an importance behind simple comedy rather than heavy stuff all the time. Okay. You know what I mean? Like grandfather story is like, it's heavy stuff. Mm, like yeah. you go back and you hear about this guy's story and it's like, oh my God, he went through the toughest fucking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I can curse, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. He went through like the toughest time <laughs> to like make it to this spot and like, oh, inspirational and blah, blah, blah. But like, if I had a tough day at work and I go home, I don't want to watch that. Yeah, yeah Like, okay. I want to watch something that just Something's like- light and light. doesn't need too much yes, energy to appreciate. exactly. Okay. And a lot of like, the more kind of like elitist content creators, they don't see that. Mm-hmm. So they'll say like, oh my God, these people just use like trashy, like whatever thumbnail and like, oh, 10 types of whatever, like no brainer. Like, okay, Lord, you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there is a big value behind that. So, okay. I, basically, I got to know a lot of that when I joined uh, and I got this appreciation for it. Uh, but yes, back to the structure. So it depends. I think we look at a lot of things. So let's say, okay, there is no client, right? Clients are off the picture. Yep. Uh, you look at certain things. Trends. Uh, trends is definitely one. So like if Christmas is coming up, you can do something Christmas related, something that can catch on. Uh, relatability is the other factor. Uh, I like to script on uh, whatever experience I have or whatever random thoughts I have or something that can bring the viewer like away from, uh, like, yeah, away from reality, like kind of like parallel reality. Okay, yeah. So like uh, one video that I scripted for came up the idea with is like the coronavirus one where people were selling uh, the, 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 the mask, mask and at, at ridiculously. Yeah. yeah. So m- the video I scripted, I had them like, basically the currency was masks. Yeah. That kind of thing. And then there are like drug dealers who like deal masks mm. and stuff <laughs> like this. And yeah, the the whole, there's a whole empire who basically controlled and they are, they overthrew the government already because they sold these masks. and they're so like, relatable. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Like to, to, extend it to a bigger level, something ridiculous. A bit exaggerated, but yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of structure behind different kind of comedy. So another place where I always like learn 
how they structure and how to break down the stories from Key and Peel. So I copied one of their formats and kind of like tweaked it a little bit with, and made, I think the first script that I actually gave a uh, pitch to World Banana and which got shot later was this thing called A Nevermind. So A Nevermind is like the most typical thing we say amongst yeah. like Singaporeans, like uh, I buy you a drink and you'll ask me like, oh, how much is it? I was like, ah, A Nevermind. Mm. Then I treat you the drink, yeah. you know? So I did this script where it's like, it's uh, one of the most typical formats, it's a one up kind of format. Okay. So it's like, level one and then a person like rebuts with a level two and then you rebut level three so buy a drink buy a meal buy a car buy a house oh, okay, and then okay. how do we end it the person's dead and he gives his whole will entitled to him <laughs> like, that's how i ended the video so this is how i structure a video okay. how i come with yeah. ideas yeah um and then uh basically once i have an idea i can either immediately script it or i just run it by a few few people and then i start scripting up a rough outline and then uh, maybe like one or two people will give me input, change a few lines or like change the ending or whatever it is. And then once we have that done, we will cast. Mm -hmm. So we will cast and do props and locations. Okay. So we will then coin, cause if I, you guys can't see the office, but basically there are only like seven seats here. So even though our cast, we have like 20, maybe like 15 people or something. So we call the people down. Like on the call. The talents, kind of thing, yeah. yeah. So like, okay, Thursday we're shooting, they come down and then we'll, we'll shoot the thing and then we prep all the props and the locations beforehand. Mm. Uh, camera wise, usually it's like one to two, uh, two cameras. Like now we try to do it with two cameras and uh, the two camera guys will be there and then they shoot the thing and then um, usually the person who wrote the script will direct and yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah. like, do you do the editing or is that like the editors? No, the editors do the editing. Oh, okay, cool, yeah, cool. Luckily enough. So like um, your position in Wabana, you were saying it's more of the idea uh, I, uh, idea side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was trying to use a chim word. Idea, idea, ideator. Ideation. No, ideator. Ideator is <laughs> the, the hip term. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, so like, you know, uh, I, I reckon like, I mean, that it's just not you thinking of this. Uh, there's a few people thinking yeah, of different, for sure, for different sure. episodes, different scripts and stuff like that. But have you ever, if, if you have a dry spell in terms of creativity, um, yeah. what do you do personally? Like, I mean, I like content where I can script well. So stuff like the coronavirus one, mm -hmm. the never mind one, uh, stuff like that. It's like the idea comes to me and I'm like, okay, let's do this. Yep. And I'm like super hyped up. I can write the script within a day. Mm. When it's dry, right? Uh, first thing is that you kind of just chill out, yep. watch a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of YouTube. Read, <laughs> read a lot of memes, whatever it is, see what's out there. And hopefully something comes to you. But of course, there's a the pressure of time. So these kind of times, like it's good if you have multiple script writers because yeah. someone else might have a good idea. Mm. If all this fails, you just go back to bread and butter. That's where we get, I would call it, you get lazy with the idea. Okay. You go back to the types of video. Yeah. Like um, like types of whatever, types Top of this. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because uh, I can take it a step further. And even when I'm getting lazy, rather than just doing a types of, I can do a what, a one day work week would look like. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the videos that I scripted for as well. Like, oh, that was you? Yeah. Oh, okay, so good. That's a one day work week, right? Yeah. It's actually a types of video. Mm. If you look at it, yeah. it's it's literally like 10 types of situations if you if you work one day a week. But yeah. it's like, you just tweak the title a bit. You can apply the writing format similarly, and then you just link it across a little bit more. So oh, it looks okay. like the story flows through. Yeah. Stuff like that. So there are definitely ways to structure structurally uh, come up with an idea. Okay. But it might, sometimes it might even do well. Yeah. So for example, the so one day a week one. So textbook method. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in, yeah, but most times I would say these kind of things come off very predictable. Mm. Like the, the jokes seem to, you, you will be able to predict what kind of jokes is going to come out uh, and stuff like that. So I always feel pretty lousy if that's the kind of script that I have to script for. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I know. I know that feeling of like yeah. you got an idea and then you have to quickly script it down before you forget it. Yeah, I write everything down on my phone. Mm. Like my phone has like a whole bank of like ideas <laughs> and like whether fail or good or lousy. Like yeah, I go back and look yeah, at them. I have and, a I have like a word document of like list of videos I want to do. Yeah, but sometimes it's, good, it's, it's, good. it's time relevant. So like you have to do it quick mm. before it becomes irrelevant. So that's the kind. Of, that's for me, right? The I took a so for me I took a hiatus on my vlogs last year mm -hmm. when I joined Wild Banana because I really wanted to rebrand my whole channel um, and the kind of stuff that I wanted to do 
was a lot more story based and more documentary based mm. and also like social issue driven and stuff like that. And I realized that those kind of things is quite timeless. So I always had this pressure of like, crap, if I don't do this now, it's, it's gone or someone else will do it and stuff like that. But when it came to this kind of content, I realized like it will always That's have true. value. Yeah. Like if, Even I talk, if it's not trending at the moment, it's, yeah, it's still it part of history. Have, yeah. yeah, it's still a learning thing to, yeah. to discover. So that's the kind of content I want to start making. Like stuff that is evergreen. But that, that was never the motivation. Lah. But uh, I realized that that's a very good factor you have with your, with your content. Mm. Yeah. Hey, at that time you were asking about the doctor for the this whole virus thing. Did you manage to uh, speak to yeah. anyone? I didn't. I got lazy. I thought that would be interesting as well. Yeah. But I think it would be hard a bit, a I bit wanted, hard for doctors. I, I think I wanted to, what was it? I wanted to interview a doctor uh-huh. about the most common everyday questions that like auntie uncles would ask. Yeah. You know, like, yes. like if I go to a mall where there was an infected patient, like would I can't anything? Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. So I think that's the kind of thing where you need during these days. But oh, I think the reason why I didn't do it was I just felt like there were a lot of doctors who, who were stepping out on social media and to say stuff. So I think that was fine. And mm. honestly, there was a lot of information coming from everywhere. So um, like every day there's new information as well on the virus. So it's, it's tough. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it, was just, it was still developing back yeah. then. And I always, I always feel like during these kind of situations, don't it's important for... Uh, the every like it's important for everyone not to panic and just to refer back to your own authority in your country on what to do like China can have their measures but what happens in China is different from Singapore mm. what happens in Germany is different from Singapore Definitely. and like even the way people react to the coronavi- coronavirus is different from region to region mm. and their vaccine is different from region to region yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that, I mean, yeah, that's the whole truth. procedure it's all different yeah. as well that's why I think it's ridiculous when people see people buying out toilet paper in Hong Kong and they start to do it here. <laughs> or like, they say like in China, the, the way they, uh, these, like the, the way they sanitize their stuff, they even sanitize their shoes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like our government never say anything about this. Yeah. So don't need to overreact. Take, take what your health uh, ministries are telling you to do. Mm. Like trust the people who are professionals. Yeah. To tell you what it's to a very do. case by case thing. Yeah. I mean, country by country as well. Because there's so much news, so you you tend to want to like take all the info. Like, oh my god, I don't take to all to the info. The best solution. Yeah, <laughs> all the info. So it's much like, info. Oh, this guy's doing this. Guy's doing this. Yeah. I'll just do but, everything. But just just listen to the guys who know best in your country. Like trust. You know, yeah. it, it's a lot of faith because people start thinking like, hey, our government don't know what to do. Like, just just trust. Yeah. Like it's a whole panic thing. I if think. they don't know what to do, you think you know what to do, man? Yeah. Like you know. So like yeah, that's what I think. So okay. sometimes. Uh, my, my dad did talk to me about this where he says like he feels influencers and I agree with this that I feel influencers and like content creators they have like a sort of like social responsibility to speak up and kind of uh, build morale mm. with whoever it is young people or whatever whether it is like comedy stuff or just like awareness on what you should do I think it's good sometimes it, it feels a bit annoying like ah this beauty person like trying to tell me what Preaching, to do yeah. doing yeah but I'm like there are kids out there who listen to them better to ministries or to their own parents. Yeah, that's, so that's very true. So they have a voice for specific demographics. So as long as they're saying the right things, I think that's good. I mean, just a few days ago, you know that whole farewell clubbing thing. Oh yeah, that was on. rubbish. I think, but there were a few like uh, these influencers that were trying to spread the message of telling people yeah. not to go for this kind of thing. So I thought that was very, that was a very powerful move. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, like a lot of these kids, I mean, we won't say kids, but people mm. uh, are more influenced by these people than like even the government because you know, who, listen, sure. who watches the government every day but yeah. you watch this person every day and you kind of you know, trust what they say. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely that responsibility is there. Um, mm. But uh, okay, let's move away from the coronavirus yeah, thing. Yeah, we keep coming back but <laughs> it's, can't, it's a can't get away from it, man. Yeah. Um, but okay, back to what you were saying about um, like what, what you foresee for your own for your own personal content, mm. you're saying more um, in-depth stuff about um, you know relative issues and things that are going uh, happening around the world, documentary style. Yeah. Um, how do you see that as a very um, individualized thing? Like, do you think that you would you would go into this as a uh, because there are some people like um, I can't remember his name who who do these kind of thing. I think it's uh, Dan. 
that means, means yeah he, he 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 did this thing where he finds out problems in each country and he travels to that country and like yep. investigates and talks about it that's very spectacular diagrams yep. um th- those kind of a bit vloggish style he documentary is, he is actually almost exactly what i want to be he when when he came out and kind of got picked up by Casey Neistat and like he started to do his thing the way he was filming and the stuff he was filming was almost exactly what I want I was so inspired I was like man this guy is doing exactly what I want to put mm. out uh, but I feel to some degree he was a bit fame hungry I, this, this sounds very weird like I don't know the guy so why am I judging mm-hmm. but it's like the way he was doing it I don't know um, yeah the, the vibe's just a little bit off. Okay. Um, but, but I but think that's what you, you yeah, kind of yeah, kind of want to go, like, go towards. Sim- simply put, like the 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 idea that is closest to me getting done first is like for example, I just want to follow one bottle. Um, to from from the point of me recycling it to the point of it turning into something usable. Okay. Okay. The so, life cycle of yeah, something. Because, I mean, I I do advocate recycling but I don't even recycle like disciplinedly. Like yeah. I can be, I finish a bottle of drink, right? And I'm like, if a recycling bottle's not near, I'm going to toss it. Yeah. Like I wouldn't save it until I reach home then I recycle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very normal. Like that's an average person, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm the average person, but I'm just a little bit woke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then because of the wokeness, I'm like, uh, oh my God, I knew, I, I, I panic over things that I should do, but I'm not doing morally wrong, blah, blah, blah. So like, I want to paint this kind of like videos where like I follow the journey from the, from it being in a trash can, follow the trash truck to the recycling place. And then like this whole, this whole crazy, stupid journey just yeah. to figure out oh, what, what happens to my one bottle. Yeah. Like yeah. I want to document that. Yeah. So people who are for recycling, they like the video, but people who don't even give a shit about the recycling, they just want to watch this idiot do this crazy journey. <laughs> and then maybe at the end of the video, they're like, okay lah. When they're holding that one empty bottle in their hands, they're like, oh my God, remember that video? That's true. It's like, so I want to create this kind of thing. The other, the other video that I really want to do, and honestly, this was the one that sparked my wanting to rebrand was, mm-hmm. I was going through like the, the, the lowest point, I think, like anxiety attacks, like every other day, like just almost, de- I wouldn't say I was going through depression, but I was just like depressed and like very low. And all I could think about was, cause I'm a very actionable person. Like mm-hmm. I, if something's happening, rather than like, Cause worrying and being sad, that it doesn't, help that doesn't solve. Yeah. They just makes things worse. I'm like very actionable. I keep thinking like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And I was like, my action was, I want to go visit the Indian slums. Okay. I want to volunteer at volunteer and or like just live there in the slums of India, and see how even people in the possibly the the crappiest environment and situation they can still find happiness in like the simplest things. Mm. Like that was my mentality. Okay. Like God knows if I go there and no one's happy. At least I'm, you find out something. At least I find out yeah, something, yeah, yeah. you know? Like that's the kind of videos I want to do. It's like, it's not every social issue out there. It's definitely social issues which I can relate to. Mm-hmm. And because you're doing things that you can relate to, people on the internet will eventually relate to that as well. Yeah, yeah. Or people who can relate to these situations will gratify towards you. Yeah. Like that's how I feel like the internet has always worked. It's and a more personal level in that yeah. sense. And and you see this kind of video, like it's evergreen. Mm. You can watch it now. Yeah, can watch always, it always be depressed there's, at some point of life. Yeah, <laughs> like there's, it's, life is sort of like a cycle. Like mm. these kind of things, they get gone through again and again. Yeah. So yeah, that sort of stuff. Cool, cool. Mm. Yeah. Looking forward to that in the year 2020. Oh, hopefully, <laughs> man. Yeah. Like, I hope, I hope this kind of stuff can, yeah. Then eventually it's like doing more story stuff. Like I've always wanted to like document like war fronts and stuff like that. Oh, damn. Yeah. So. Um, back to your gaming stuff. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. How, how was the Sea Games, man? Tell me about that. Uh, the journey there was pretty crazy because I had to change my citizenship. So I used to be a German citizen. And then because Sea Games was around the corner, you have to be a citizen to So you're join. a PR here? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm. Even though your mom is Singaporean. She's I, Chinese, but she's Singaporean now. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, w- I came here when I was four, like three, three mm. or four. Yeah. Okay. So I've been here for like 20 years already. So you had to get your citizenship changed? Yeah, to join the Sea Games. So you had to drop your German citizenship? Yeah. I oh, give it okay, up. Okay. It's not one of those dual citizenship no, things. No, no, no. Okay. The the loophole system for me is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, I could have done it earlier. 
wink wink Gosh. but no more yeah okay. so i mean um i mean this this is probably quite i mean it is a big deal um and uh you know yeah. i i i do you f- le- leading up to the sea games what was your your focus of this 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 Mm. competition like if you talk about gaming tournaments there's been so many bigger gaming tournaments and most more prestigious ones which i've been to and i was kind of like retiring already <laughs> as funny as it sounds uh but c games is the first like mainstream media focused was this the first time c games held yeah oh okay first time yeah so i knew that because i used uh i was kind of like always the top southeast asian player okay so I knew that Singapore needed a good representation going to something like that. And my main focus is to change the perception of what esports is. Okay. So if I do well, I can come back, I can speak about gaming, talk about the different perspectives towards it and basically try to like build the community a bit more. Mm. So that was what I wanted to do with so games. Like I didn't give a crap about the, the money or whatever. Like honestly, it's, I, I didn't win jack shit by the way. Silver is zero dollars. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Go is 10K. <laughs> Silver is zero. What? How does that make sense? Give silver yeah. something, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's nothing. So but it was more a public awareness and that um, of of esports, I would say. Yeah, like that's my main goal, la. Okay. Yeah. And and what what do you think is lacking in Singapore at the moment for esports? Everything. I think. Um, okay, we have a decent infrastructure. Like we have lots of lands, very good internet connection. Uh, there are organizations which are trying to push the boundaries here, but I think the fans are very like not proactive. Like we prefer to like stay home and then watch the games online rather than going down to tournaments mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And that hurts yep. the tournaments yep. because uh, they need to like somehow fund the events or like uh, even brands are very stingy on money because a lot of gamers here, they don't get the attention. Yep. Like there are not enough like support local gamers. You, you, you tend to like, if you're going to watch a stream, you're going to watch like, you know, the American streamers and whatnot. So I think that happens a lot here. So... Gamers here don't really have a good funding mm. and backing behind them. Uh, so they can't earn and it's very hard to do this full time. Yeah. And if you balance that against like our <coughs> curriculum and our like everyday, like how, how much hustle we go through in the Singapore society, I think it's very difficult to be a pro gamer here. Pro gamer as in that would be your, your main job? Yeah. Okay. Or even like competitive. Yeah. So like, I mean... Um, I I I I I'm always very interested in this kind of new, I would say new industry, mm. just to put it very bluntly. Even yep. even like travel videographers, I call them new industry because it's not something that your parents tell you to grow up and be. Yeah. So That's uh, true. I can understand when when I mean, the, the to put it simply, they're just cameramen. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 The I other mean, Sean Cole, like, <laughs> think you're so cool. He's a cameraman. <laughs> Freak. You're going to clip this and send it to me. Yeah, it. <laughs> send it to me. It, but it's like, yeah, I can understand the, the, the beginning where it's difficult to gain the support and to gain the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, that, that readily, I think the US is like very huge on this. Um, they are, I, I mean, it's also a why cultural do you think thing. So? It's a cultural thing. Do you think like the like, whole Asian parents want you to have a safe job kind of thing? Yeah, like if you look at just unis, for example, right? Uh, or not unis, like education systems in general. Singapore is very by the book. Mm. Like if you are obedient, you can score well in tests. Yeah. You just need to copy paste the answers. You don't really need to understand. You don't, uh, we're not here to ask you to think out of the box yeah, yeah, and come up with new creative. ideas. You, yeah. yeah. You, we don't need that here in Singapore. Answer it's, the textbook. It's how the, <laughs> yeah, answer yeah. the textbook. In America, it's like, I want you to show me that you get it. Mm. I don't care so much that you get it right. But if you understand the concept and you can apply it, yeah. that's what we want. I feel like, I mean, obviously I haven't studied in the US, mm. but that's the kind of feeling I get, okay, okay. right? So I feel like that's way better in, a cre- in any creative field or any kind of new, uh, like new industry and kind of like parents adopt to that as well, you see? So American parents are more, or, or not just American, like I feel like Western parenting or Western culture is more towards the like, okay, go and explore, try stuff. And then if really cannot, then okay, go do your nine to five. But like in Singapore, it's like you aim for that good nine to five. <laughs> Don't need to waste your time trying all this nonsense. Do what has been yeah, done before. And exactly. It works. This works, do that. And yeah, but I think I think times are also slowly changing. 
So yeah, we're going to move away the from new, it. New parents are a bit more open to yeah. that. And it's thanks to the people who passed away. Definitely. Like when we, I say we, but I don't think I'm part of that yet, but maybe for gaming. Lah. So when people who are successful passed away through these different kind of industries and they make it into mainstream media like newspapers or whatnot and then parents read about it and they're like, oh, actually this is a viable option for my kid. Mm. And he's pretty good at this. Yeah. So like maybe you can do that instead it's of being proven. a doctor. It needs to be proven. Yeah. It needs to, yeah. Exactly. But yeah, just picking up on that, um, I, I, I met this creator just a while ago. Uh, I won't say who she is, but um, she's quite a big YouTuber. But uh, she was telling about her struggles, like becoming a creator full time. Mm. Uh, and of course, parents want the best for you. They, they kind of... You trying want, to figure out who it is. Uh, yeah, can, go on, go on. You tell can me. try, you can try. Okay. Um, so um, her parents obviously were concerned and were pretty against it, like uh -huh. most parents would be. Um, but the thing is that she tried it, she, she, she made a deal. So I don't know if this is good um, tips or advice for youngsters out there, but um, she, she did this. She, she um, did this for a year, exactly a year. So she took mm. her sort of a college, you know, like college break, a yeah. uh, year off that kind of thing to pursue this YouTube thing full time and she went mm. all out for it and she proved to her parents yeah. that she could earn more money than uh, an, an accountant. Mm -hmm. So based on that, based on um, a hard proof, um, then her parents said, okay, fine, go and do this. Damn. But you well, know- Who is this? Yeah? Used to be an accountant. <laughs> no, no, they didn't used to be an accountant, but that was the, the, the uh. benchmark, you know? So I think, you know, parents just want that, you know, you show me black and white. Uh, you show yeah. me this YouTube, uh, it's true. TikTok, whatever thing, uh, can earn you the same money and it's be true. stable. Then I'll let you do it. Yeah. I think for me, it was the same. Mm. When it came from, it started with gaming. So with gaming, parents were super against it. <laughs> and I told them I could earn money with it. And I, so, but okay, they're on a bit harsh. They, they just cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> so I earned my pocket money winning like weekend tournaments oh, and stuff okay, like okay, that. Okay. Uh, and then when I really didn't have money that to do like house chores and stuff like that. Like, I mean, but that's like normal, but they basically just cut me off. But there was a, the, I mean, there will be a way to, to sort of encourage you to push it even yeah. harder because you got it's sort of like you got no fallback mm, kind of thing yeah. uh, and it makes you make, take it more as a job you know take it seriously it's not like uh, I play when I want to play yeah. or the one that kind of thing it becomes like I need to prove something and I need to earn money because I need to survive yeah then the moment I started like earning more and like winning tournament, like big tournaments and stuff like that and then the money came in and uh, I was travelling around the world and stuff like that then they like oh that's interesting like didn't know you could do that yeah. And my, the funny thing was my brother thought that my mom was paying for all my travels. <laughs> but I'm like, no. No. Nope. I'm like, I'm the one selling all this. Nice. Then later, YouTube came along. And I think because they already had like the kind of like fuse towards my gaming, how that was like then when I was traveling along around with YouTube. And YouTube is way more uh, lucrative, actually. Uh, so it, it just, they, they embraced mm. my YouTube pursuit. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, because they've, they've seen what like, um, yeah, what it can bring, this kind of new media stuff. Yeah. They kind of just, as you get older and you kind of show them that you know what you're doing, I think they slowly, slowly just let go. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it needs to be proven and yeah. Yeah, explained well. And communicated across. I think definitely if your parents don't get it, the first step is definitely first to just communicate and have them understand what your game plan is. Mm. If you're going in just for fun and you don't have a game plan, chances are you're going to fail anyways. Yep. But if you have a game plan and you want to do it seriously, then I'm like, uh, most likely you can communicate that across as annoying as it is to do it. It is possible for you to communicate that across to your parents. That's so, so true. Uh, I feel like that's what happened. And that, yeah, yeah, I mean, there needs to happened. be a logic to it. You can't yeah. just say, because Casey and I start vlogging. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like, I can't just be, oh, I freaking love gaming. I mean, like, that doesn't Yeah, yeah, doesn't it, doesn't, it doesn't work. You, yeah. need to, you need to be structured to know when your income's coming in, what are the possibilities that you might not make money, you know, these yeah, kind of very current. realistic things. Then, yeah. and only then your parents will understand. Like, yeah. yeah, don't be too much of a kiddie who's just out there for fun and games. Mm. Yeah. This thing is annoying. Right? They have it. Yeah, we, dude, I live with this every other day, man. It's pretty oh crazy. Um, the Wild yeah. Banana office has this weird roof that just contracts and expands. So yeah. it makes this part noise. Mm. Oh, this is going to go on to all my audio. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, we're about to wrap up this whole Oh, episode. wait, I got, I got some questions. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is a um, first. Uh, let me think, let me think. Um, this is a first. Yeah, okay, okay. 
what is the direction you see yourself with your channel? Damn. Damn. Okay. Come on. Um, conversation is two ways. Man. Yeah, this, come, this is just a two-way conversation. Guess. Yeah. Such a good guest. Um, okay. So I've, um, I started this YouTube thing uh, because I... I was very interested in camera equipment and of course yep. just keep buying uh, buying all these camera equipments is was very costly so I wanted to just borrow it from camera stores and uh, review them of yeah. course but uh, my, my inspiration was always uh, Marquez Brownlee have you mm -hmm. heard of MK, MKBHD yeah love him um, he, he has he has strived on this path for YouTube for a very long time and has stuck to a singular niche which um, I think once you hit it in technology, once you hit, um, once you're popular in that, it's it's uh, a very smooth, not to say smooth, but a, a, a good path to go on because technology is always evolving. Mm. You always have something to talk about, um, something something to innovate on. Yeah. So my my goal for this is just to to have a channel in Singapore that can bring technology in a new uh, sort of entertaining way mm. like when I started out my first few uh, products and stuff like you know with drones and things like that that were popular but I wanted to do something fun with it you know like drone chasing a, a, a motorbike that kind of thing you know mm. something that yeah some people in America might do but how many people in Singapore will, will do that or yeah. how many people who have a drone will try and do this kind of thing so I think my goal for like my own channel was to always review technology but put a spin and entertainment on it yeah, that's yeah. important. It's I think I think like there's content that works like in the US and let's say it's not done in Singapore. I think the way to bring it back is definitely through number one is relatability. So if you put a face to the host mm -hmm. and sort of create the relatability to the audience, that's one way. So for example, like me going and doing all this kind of stuff. And the other one is to bring a local twist. Mm. So exactly what you said. Yeah. Like creating some kind of relevance to the audience here for that gadget yeah. that for example, Marcus Brownlee cannot mm. Like for example, like how uh, can, like if a drone can survive the thunderstorms here or like where can you actually yeah, fly the drone? Yeah, very local context very, kind yeah, of thing. You bring it back down to a local context and then you build that local audience, then build it up. Yeah. You know, like I always, totally I always try to film outside because yeah. then people know that it was filmed in Singapore. Yeah. So this is something I really want to try and hit. Like, because... You know, if I keep filming in my room or in a studio, nobody knows where the hell I yeah. am. Somebody and it's the same. Like, why why would I watch yours compared to like Marcus Brown, Leon, yeah. you know? Because you might want a Singaporean take on that, you know? Yeah. Based on the price, the weather, you know, context and yeah. stuff like For that. For sure. Like, actually, the funny thing is cameras, especially, there's such a, there's such a difference shooting in. Like, when you shoot in the US... The lighting there is somehow just better. <laughs> like I can shoot pictures in the US and it just looks good off of my phone. And then you shoot Singapore and the like, lighting somehow looks them off. Like you don't get it. But honestly, it's the weather. I feel it's the clouds. Yeah, yeah it's the clouds there. or the weather is something. So actually it's not, it's not like you can't get the kind of content there through their eyes. Like, I mean, if you shoot iPhone versus Samsung in Singapore, like with Google Pixel, it might be different. So yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's I agree a, there. I, it's a very difficult market to hit in yeah. Singapore. A lot of creators have also asked me like, why you choose this niche? It's it's tough. It's very difficult to grow. Yeah, but it's tough. I I enjoy it, so that's that's where I'm heading to. Of course, um, I I, I love like my grandfather's story. This mm. kind of documentary things as well. And yeah. I. I Okay, there was this concept that I, I always wanted to do was um, what happens after dark. I mean, it's not a, it's not a very new concept, but it's yeah. something I wonder what happens in Singapore because I work very long hours uh, uh, as an architect and sometimes I go home at like 3 a.m. and I mm. see these things like um, uh, machines that are... Do you know that there are like these Roomba machines that mow the lawn on its own? Oh, no. You know, you know those Roombas that are just yeah, vacuuming? Yeah, yeah. It's something like that, but for lawn mowers. So these mm. are parked at like botanic gardens and stuff, right? And at night, they activate themselves and start mowing the lawn oh, shit. and come back home. We don't even cool. know that yeah. because we are never out at that time. Yeah. So another thing is like, you know those walkways where we always have shelter because we are Singapore yeah. and we are spoiled. So like shelter to shelter, who the hell cleans the top there? Actually, this guy stands on the top of a truck and just hoses the whole thing down. Okay. But we don't I see all these that. things yeah. because we are not awake for it. So... Yeah. Um, like I once I, I did once see like the the workers who are like just on boats cleaning mm. the rivers and like that was mind blowing to me mm. like I didn't know that's how they did it they yeah. literally like they roll a boat down the you know the waterway uh -huh. along like Kaki Pongo the, oh Pongo yeah Pongo Pongo so what, they use nets to just fish out yeah they just fish out stuff one by one I'm like oh 
Yeah, I just I shouted thanks. Uh. Yeah. That's all I could do. You know, like, I don't know what is Singapore. Uh, when, when foreigners come here, my friends from Australia, they're like, what is the landscaping budget here? Because everything is damn green and damn well maintained. Yeah. And it's all these people that are out there. At, but the you know, c- cityscaping budget must be shit. Uh. It's, oh, it's uh, crazy. We are very up, down, up, down. Yeah. Like, I feel like Singapore, <laughs> aerially, if you're looking at it, aerially speaking, is one of the most ugliest countries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I mean, we, we make up for you. Get what I mean, gardens. right? Yeah, like, you mean like the buildings are like not like if you look at Barcelona. Okay, those are those are the tip top ones. Are tip-top are. Eh. Barcelona or like Paris, uh-huh. where things lead in a full line into a central. Like for example, Paris, yeah. all the roads lead up to the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah, Barcelona, they have a linear. They have like, the grid. They have, they have the, the grid. Yeah. yeah. Singapore is a Japalang, everything slap here, slap there. Like there's there's no Actually, that's the funny thing, right? Singapore being such a young nation, we should have followed from these kind of things. <laughs> but in a sense that those 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 things were very ancient. Mm. So maybe Singapore was doing something a bit different. Yeah. So I mean it's you know, it's a small issue, but it's just, a small it's issue. But funny. Yeah, yeah, sometimes I do get annoyed when there aren't grids or things like that. But yeah. even like in Melbourne grids or in Chicago grids, they have grid locks. Mm. So I think there's a whole science to like this LTA kind of things yeah. of planning roads. But, but I mean, their the road planning is great. La, so who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Although yeah. so little it's just, today, uh, but it just look cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so back to the, that documentary things. I always wanted to go a bit deeper and make better films. You know, mm. I don't call myself a filmmaker because I haven't reached that level of storytelling. I don't think I tell stories very well, but that's where I'm striving to. Same, same, um, same, same, same. Apart from, you know, tech reviews, that's that's the one that usually gets the views on my channels. But mm-hmm. I want to try a different way, which is telling stories of yeah. issues happening or just, you know, storyboarding. I'll ask you, yeah. okay, I'll ask you a follow-up question, sure. which is a question I have to myself, which I haven't quite answered. Do you think you should post these kind of stories on another channel? on this channel right I think this is one of the questions I struggle with because it's like if people have always tuned into my channel hoping it's Nickelodeon Mm -hmm. and I start rebranding and start (laughs) posting Discovery Channel channel, (laughs) it's kind of weird right yeah so like shouldn't I but then you start to you start to wonder like crap I already have like these thousand subscribers Mm. here I'm losing out all of them yeah I mean if you ask me instinctively it's no, I'll put it right. on the same channel because the struggle was insane to yeah. even get to 1K, which I just got a few days ago. Yeah. But I totally can relate. It's, like, it's I understand because you want to keep the content consistent. There, It's like, you know, a makeup channel doesn't suddenly do, I don't know. Gaming. Gaming, yeah. yeah it, for they, no reason. They won't suddenly put a gaming uh, review on there. But at the same time, I am not experience enough in YouTube to to explain this. Yeah. But in my own instinct, I will still put it on the same channel just because I find that maybe people people come to your, your channel for, for you. you. So they might be interested in anything else that you might have to say. For example, so I, I, I really enjoy KG's arcade things. Mm. I don't like arcades. Mm. You get what I mean? I enjoy yeah. his personality and his entertainment, but yeah. I, do not engo- I do not enjoy going to arcades. So yeah. if he starts talking about a different topic. I will still go there. He he did a review for like the container hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was damn entertaining. I, I, I came because I enjoy the person, not because I enjoy, okay, not, ne- I mean, content is one thing, but mm. not necessarily enjoy the content. You know I, I get mean? what you mean. Yeah. So, like you're following for the personality, yeah. not just for the content so anymore. Say, if you want to do this, stay with your channel mm. because the channel isn't um, Wah Banana, your channel isn't NOC, it yeah. is Thomas. Yeah. 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 which is you so yeah I think cool perspective yeah. yeah if I started the channel as some com- like as a as a company then mm. maybe I might have to think a bit more about that but I get what you mean. personally I, I hope that my subscribers are here for like if for I was me. like Thomas Games and yeah. then I start doing makeup I yeah, should get a Thomas bit. makeup right <laughs> yeah, <then>. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense yeah. that makes sense yeah yeah but good question yeah yeah um yeah. What else okay. Okay. What one else one last what question. You okay. You used to watch my videos. Yes. Um, what do you think of them, and which one is your favorite? Like feedback, basically. You mm. can critique. I I like the ones that are more impromptu. You can tell the ones that are more impromptu rather than um, for sure a bit more planned. Yeah. Uh, the reason I like improv a bit more is because it's it feels a lot more natural. Like I, it's if I'm there with you. Yeah. Like for example, um, I mean, I mean, you going to you going to Australia, you know, surprise my friends yeah, there, right? Yeah. I think that was damn entertaining because yeah. I got to know, I got to see how your friends react. You know, it wasn't like, hey guys, let's go for 
go to this amusement park and let's have fun that kind yeah. of thing it's it's like you know I'm just going to go there and film whatever happens there yeah. to me um, like I said I come for the person and, and the spon- spontaneous spontaneous Spont- yeah okay yeah. the spontaneousness yeah. yeah yeah the spontaneousness of, yeah. of the video so I would say yeah. I prefer those videos it's a bit documenting rather than creating you know yeah. what I mean but you are also creating because you are at the end of the day, you are the one who is editing it and you are storyboarding it yeah. into the story of that day. Yeah. But I, I prefer that over something that I know was structured. Mm. You know, if I know something was structured, it's still good, but not as much as I would um, a, a, a natural vlog. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's also one of the things. Like, I know that those are the kind of things that do well. And even for my, a lot of my friends, they'll say like, oh, I enjoyed these kind of vlogs. Mm. Like the... It's like, it's also the reason why like daily vlogs work. Yeah. Because they're that spontaneous and it's that random. But like, personally speaking, I felt like there was a depreciating value personally to those kind of content. Like I always had to have a camera around. Sometimes I feel bad because I like, I don't know if I'm intruding on the person that I'm hanging out with. Like I can't really be there, be there mm-hmm. with the person. I, I am. I, I feel like I am, but that person might not feel it. Yeah. Uh, things like that so like that kind of like weighed in on me and I'm just like in what situation can I like distance myself a bit more and things like that yeah yeah, yeah. so that my everyday life can still be just that's like, true because the you know. camera is is another thing like no, some people are not used to the camera yeah. they might act differently and yeah. stuff like that like I have, I have friends who are like great in front mm. of camera like like those two friends yeah, yeah, yeah. in their vlog I don't know you, you, maybe you'll link it somewhere <laughs> they, they are hilarious like I feel like for most of those vlogs which do well, right, I am not funny at all. Like, <laughs> I'm just not funny at all. But I am blessed by yeah the people who are around uh, who are just hilarious and I just capture it. I capture the moment and people can resonate with that. Like, that, I feel like that's that always been the case. was unexpected video, you know? I thought it was going to be like, uh, you know, just a surprise. Just go. Yeah, but I didn't expect it to be so entertaining. Yeah, then they started sell me a TV and <laughs> yeah, shit like this. Right? Yeah. Wow, they are they're hilarious epic. yeah Le- so legitly they are hilarious <laughs> even even in many like of the older vlogs like mm. I film with like my TSL crew and stuff like that like my, my colleagues at TSL um, ex-colleagues now like we, we had to film one like proper TSL video with an eel and then oh, so, it, yeah. so the next day the, the eel is just there <laughs> then we say we can't we can't kill it right or we can't just flush it down the toilet then I'm like okay I'm gonna film this whole vlog. We're gonna we're gonna bring this eel to the Longkang. to the Longkang, <laughs> and it's just a three minute vlog. But it's very cool because we we had to Google up where the closest Longkang was, where the stream would flow yeah. so that it can hit the sea. Yeah. And then once we got there, then we like we threw the eel <laughs> down. Then it it created the loudest splat <laughs> that we heard in the history of splats. Oh it's just God. like plop. <laughs> they were like body slam. <laughs> I think it's dead. And then the, the vlog just ended. So oh, like something like this, it was great. But I, I feel like on a day to day, I'm not doing as much of these anymore. Mm. So like, yeah. Because I think you like, run the risk of these kind of things not happening. Some days are just yeah, nothing. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And you don't want to force it as well. Yeah, exactly. You, don't you like, really oh, don't want to force Thomas it. Thomas has another camera here. I have to be like, or yeah, entertaining yeah. and stuff. But Definitely. You know, but then, then again, you might miss out on these moments. Yeah. You know, what if you didn't have a camera on that day? You yeah. know, that kind of thing. So I try to, like, when things are gonna happen I mean and I know that the people are like comfortable with it I'll bring a camera nice yeah but uh, not most times now I feel like that doesn't really happen yeah Yeah. so I mean as we get older I think things get a little bit more mundane so I'm all for it when kids like ask like oh my god should I start vlogging I want to start vlogging I don't know how to do it like just use your phone go out there and film whatever like you can definitely like there's so many people out there who are so funny so hilarious like honestly a lot of my ideas I'm a script writer for a comedy channel but I don't think I'm like the funniest person. I think I'm a little bit witty mm-hmm. at times, sure. But uh, most of the jokes and ideas come from me watching my friends yeah. and like stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. people they're, are just, they're, they're just not in the in the habit of capturing it. Or yeah, not, yeah. Like they just express. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am the I am the one who likes to document. Mm-hmm. So just bring it together. Yeah, yeah. Dude, like phone videos are so good these days. Yeah. Like when I went skiing, like I I legitly like took out my phone to film because yeah. I don't want to bring my camera and stuff like that. And yeah. Then, it's it's I mean it's possible on YouTube and stuff like that. But I mean since we're on that, like mm. younger younger kids asking you about make start, starting to make videos, uh, I mean what are the common common questions that they they ask? How do I start? How do yeah. I grow my channel and all that kind of things? But um, 
have has there been a deeper deeper advice that you've given like in terms of creating a con creating content that you know that you think um, is okay not evergreen but something that's I sustainable mean. um i'm because I, I kids, copy yeah. I copy an advice from David Dobrik. Mm -hmm. Okay, f first of all, the the gear thing is most common. Like I am proof to it. I film f my first forty vlog episodes on my phone. It's a Samsung S four, like uh, S seven, I think. Okay, shitty phone. Like compared to what we have now. Yeah. So, like that that's proof. I got to like I don't know three thousand subs or something on that thing. So I'm like that's damn good on a like yeah you can grow a channel with a phone basically mm. it's possible. Um, but yeah, the advice I usually give is make stuff that uh, you want to make rather than what's out there. And then the goal is more so when you put it, so this is almost like paraphrase from David Dobrik basically. He said this and I was like, yeah, that's, that's it. What he said. Yeah. <laughs> um, he like, you, you film stuff where if your friends play it on their living room TV, you're like happy and you'll be proud of that. Mm. I think that's the goal. Okay. So like when I make stuff and like there are a lot of people who make stuff and it's cringy and like they, they feel weird when people play it. Then I'm like, that's probably not it. Yeah. You know, like if my friends watch a certain kind of content, I'm happy that they're watching it. And after they watch, they're happier. So I'm like, yeah, okay. That's, okay. That, that's cool. Yeah. That's the kind of like goal, I guess, for me. That, that's the kind of benchmark for me. Yeah. But definitely for me, it's like make stuff that you want to make. Because if you make it and you feel good about it, there will definitely be people who resonate and relate and... Like that's what the internet does. They bring people together. Mm. Um, yeah. If you want to make videos about hating someone, sure, go ahead. Mm. Like it's not, I, I won't watch it, but like people, there are influencers out there who do a lot of this kind of like commentary stuff. Like, and there will be people who join in yeah. because they resonate, they mm -hmm. relate and that, that's how it works. But it's also very hard not to, you know, jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. Like what you say, f see, like, you know, follow what people are doing and just go, go do that. Yeah. But the thing is like, you most people do that because they enjoy mm. like I I see a seven second challenge video and I'm like oh my god that's quite fun mm. let me find a friend and like let's do that as yeah, well yeah, yeah. and because we are having fun that resonates like people feel that and they like they watch it and yeah. they'll share it or like ask their friends to watch it and whatever I think all those kind of emotions like transcends just the boundary of the internet <clears throat> like mm. you can feel when something is genuine or they just do it for the yeah. for the sake of the content definitely definitely yeah and I think that's important yeah. when you do it for the sake of like you want to do it rather than oh the video like YouTube made me do it yeah yeah. definitely YouTube is yeah. it's honestly one of the hardest things I've ever done which I mean it, may, it makes me think about you know the typical kind of question of like okay what do you guys want to see post it down in the comments below like I say that once in a while, but I never believe in any mm -hmm. of that shit. You want to like, do, you, uh, like do you, you, you should do. do what you want to do, <laughs> not what viewers want to see. Like if the moment you're doing what viewers want to see, like that defeats the whole purpose. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You should be in control. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. But I think some people ask that just for like, just to stir yeah. up ideas and stuff like that. That's, think, yeah. That's totally fine. That, that's more for me as well. It's yeah. like, I can bounce off of the ideas that like the viewers give me and whatnot. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's good. Yeah, let's let's wrap it up here. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having um, me. You can find Thomas at Instagram Thomas K. Hey Thomas K. Thomas dot K or Thomas K. No, it's Hey Thomas K. Hey Thomas. Yeah, hey, yeah, 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 it's Hey Thomas. That's the one. Yeah. Hey Thomas K. Yeah. I'm gonna put it. Yeah. On the screen. More importantly, um, in the YouTube channel. As YouTube well. channel as yeah. well. Uh, wow banana. Everything will be linked in the description below. Yeah. And Never mind wow banana. They got enough subscribers. <laughs> Whatever man. Yes. Um, subscribe. <laughs> but to we Thomas. use the office, so actually, yeah, we should get that in a plug. <laughs> this is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thanks wow banana for the office. Very comfortable <laughs> space. <laughs> yeah. Things nice. Uh, but yes. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Good chit chat. Woo. Now, now you have to clear up all this gear. Yes. You guys have no idea. How much gear he sets up? This is a this. Th if I did a podcast, it's literally that that thing. That thing. Put on the table and then we just stop. You can't have a sexy voice like this. Nah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have sexy content. Nice. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Talk Some More. If you've enjoyed this episode, do give it a thumbs up or a like, depending on which platform you're on. If you want more content like this, do also consider subscribing and leaving some comments as to what you'd like to hear next. For now, thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next episode.